Hey, what's happening guys? What I got for you today is definitely a classic circuit you should know. This is a relaxation oscillator based on the Texas Instruments SN74HC 14N, which is a hex inverting Schmidt trigger. This is probably one of the simplest oscillators you can make because it requires only two components, well, three components. Okay, for all you out there going, I count more than three components. This current limiting resistor and the LED don't count. We have the hex inverting Schmidt trigger, a resistor, and a capacitor for our RC timing circuit. Those are the only things. This is just to show you the output. It's really not necessary. So, we move that out of the way and, you know, bump the camera as I as I do, and give you an idea of what this circuit looks like. Hey, before I forget, I want to tell you guys, this video is sponsored by Solder Stick, but more about that later. So first of all, let's talk about what all this means. Hex, six, just means there's six of them in the single chip. Inverting, just means it inverts it, one over X. And the Schmidt trigger, means we're getting hysteresis. So let's say, for instance, we have like a, I have a graph here. And we'll call this 5 volts and 0 volts. Now, if we have a square wave coming through, what we're looking for in most electronics is an edge whether it is the leading edge or the trailing edge we call this the rising edge falling edge whatever you want to call it but you're looking for an edge and this is going to switch states our circuit is going to switch states every time it sees an edge which is pretty good except have you ever seen a square wave that looks that perfect what we end up with our square waves are kind of go, and that's ringing. So in a circuit that is looking for an edge, you know, if we zoom in here, there's an edge, there's an edge, there's an edge, there's an edge. You know, your circuit could switch five times. So what the hex inverter does, or what the Schmidt trigger does rather, is it creates a hysteresis pocket. Okay. So this area down here, this area up here, well, they're not going to trigger the signal. The signal has to cross through the packet and again, one complete waveform. And what that also does, and I'll show you this, there's our graph again, 5 volts, 0 volt, this is time, of course. Is this going to smooth out our square wave? Because we have a capacitor in that circuit. Right there, that's the, that is our main timing component. And that capacitor is going to charge someone like this and discharge and charge and discharge. But we're not going to see that. Because we're only going to see what happens when the signal crosses into this pocket. All right, you with me so far? So here's our circuit. First thing we need to draw is our inverter. You know, if you're familiar with your, your digital symbols, that's an inverter. And then we need to do this. Boom, 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 boom. Now it is a Schmidt trigger inverter. So the first thing we're going to do, of course, is we're going to have some feedback. Because electronics thrive on feedback, right? And in this case, we are using a 1 meg resistor. And then we are going to take also on our input, a capacitor to ground. And in this case, we're using a 0.1 
microfarad resistor. Now our LED is hooked up out here. So like there's our resistor, there's our LED, and then that goes to ground. But that is really not part of our circuit. So one meg 0.1 microfarad. What is the um, the formula for the RC time constant? Tau equals R times C. So in this case, our resistance is one comma oh 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 ohms. And our capacitance is point one microfarad, which we can express as one point zero to the minus seven. And when we work out our formulas and our math. Well, our time constant is going to be 0.1 or 10 hertz. How do we figure that out? 1 over T, well, 1 over 0.1. And that'll give us our 10 hertz. So, let's look at the symbol, or this symbol, the circuit, and I'll show you how I set it up. But first, let's have a word from our sponsor. Today, we're talking about solder, stap, solder stick T-tap connectors, also known as IDCs or insulation displacement connectors. They're super easy to use. Let's say, for instance, you know, you have a wire in your car or your boat or your ATV or your motorcycle or whatever, and you need to tap off of it. So what do you do? Well, you could try and get a knife and cut some of that insulation off. and yeah, You don't want to do none of that. Find the right size for your wire of the insulation displacement connectors. Put your wire in there. You need a pair of pliers. You want to make sure that clicks and locks. See that? And now there is a slot there that you can take a standard spade terminal <laughs> that one's not in the center there here we go you can take a standard spade terminal that plugs right in there and now you have a mostly waterproof weatherproof solid connection and that's from Solder Stick. If you think something like this would go good for your projects, there's a link down below where you can get a discount. Okay, so here's our circuit again. And I'm just powering it with a couple AA batteries for 5 volts. And again, like I said, we're getting about 10 hertz. And we'll look at that here. So here's our chip. And it is a 1, 2, 3. It's a 14 pin chip. Pin 14 is your VCC from 2 to 6 volts. Pin 7 is your ground, and then you'd have to look up for your A's and your Y's, your ins and your outs. But pin 1 is input 1, pin 2 is output 1. So we put a resistor across those two pins there, and a capacitor going from pin 1 to 0, to, to ground. So that capacitor is going to have to charge and discharge, charge and discharge, as it puts a voltage into 1, which will get... Schmidt triggered and the output of two. So, pretty simple. Oh, the other ones are just taking the inputs to ground. Standard CMOS practice. Let's hook this up to the uh, oscilloscope. And we'll have a look at that waveform. It should be relatively square.
There we go. 12.52 hertz and a pretty solid square wave. So let's swivel down here again. Let's take out our 0.1 microfarad capacitor. And we'll put in a 0.22. So this should slow it down by about half, right? We're going to find out. Well, there you go. 5.6 hertz. So you see how simple it is to set up an easy little oscillator like this. And this can be a clock source for, you know, shoot, just about anything you need. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share. Don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to Solder Stick for sponsoring the video. And a big thanks to you guys for watching. That's it. I'm out. Peace.